Hey, this is the Nature Rick Cliff. And believe it or not, whether you like it or don't like it, learn to love it. Because you have to listen to Wrestling Is Real. It is the best thing going today. Woo! The worldwide leader of podcasting excellence. The king of podcasts radio network proudly presents The Wrestling Is Real Podcast. Because wrestling needs us. And welcome to the Wrestling Is Real Podcast. Another program here in the books for all of you. Thank you for listening in. If you didn't get a ca- chance to go and catch it, I did a recap of TNA Slammiversary, which turned out really well this week. I must say, I really enjoyed that pay-per-view, and I gave a lot of comments about it. And I hope you can catch it right now, kingofpodcasts.com. You can find it right here on the website, or go to the YouTube, or also where you find podcasts, wherever you listen to them. So that could be Spotify, that could be Apple Podcasts, that could be YouTube, or that could be iHeartRadio. Whatever you want to go, right? However you want to go get to it. It's all there. Tune in. It's also on TuneIn, as a matter of fact, among other places. So make sure to go ahead and download, check it out, or go to kingofpodcasts.com. And you'll find all the places to go ahead and find the show, find social media. So you can find all the clips that I put out after the fact. You can go ahead and get a little bit of snippets, a little bit of a flavor of what I talked about that might entice you to listen to the whole hour-long program, and I hope you'll consider it. Now, the last few weeks, I can't help but be critical, overly critical of WWE because, as I have said before plenty of times, whatever the audience is seeing right now that you see in the house shows, the audience on television, in the arena, the base of fans that will be watching the show on a regular basis, okay, All of you can feel like you can stay in that delusional bubble all you want. But if I go ahead and pull up the ratings once again, and if I see another rating results that stay are lackluster once again, what do you expect me to say? So what we got is 1.793 million viewers. We got that. Okay. So it did go up. And we've looked at the PW Torch. They talk about what the hours look like. 1.8 million viewers for hour one, 1.9 for hour two, 1.6 for hour three. So second hour was up. And what was in that second hour was Drew McIntyre and CM Punk, Seth Rollins, all with each other and a setup of that f- match for SummerSlam. And the, the crux that leads us into the Liv Morgan Rhea Ripley women's world title match at SummerSlam with Dominic finally shooting down Liv Morgan. So that was what people got into. Okay. So those, those segments worked, but let's keep it in mind. It took us a long time to get there. I mean, we went through an endlessly going on saying, okay, we have so much happening when it comes to Seth Rollins sorry, with CM Punk, Drew McIntyre. And now Seth Rollins is a special guest referee. And seeing CM Punk finally say, okay, we're cleared. The, um, the uh, Drew McIntyre is susp- suspicion is lifted. All these little nuances, they finally had to go and untie this shit so they could finally have the match. But they made us wait so long to see if we're going to finally have that match. But nine o'clock, that is usually when everybody kind of like starts tuning in for the most part. They caught that. And good. That said something. Those were two storylines they finally gave a payoff on. So I give them credit on that. Well, the payoff's good. I mean, Drew Drew McIntyre, CM Punk, adding Seth Rollins into the match. It's a match we wanted. Everything's finally cleared up. Red tape is all gone. So we're going to get that match. That's wonderful for SummerSlam. That's a main event match. So we got that. That's really, really great. Then we move along and say, okay, we can also say that the Dominant Mysterio Rhea Ripley Liv Morgan segment, I guess Liv Morgan and Daisy Dukes pops a rating? I mean, yeah, pop the rating, I guess. I think that's what people were probably turning into. Like, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if some of the Nielsen viewers, they got their box, they got the diaries, right? And they stopped to see a blonde and Daisy Dukes. It's a little bit risque. And I was like, oh. Oh, we're going to stop. And they're not even paying attention. They're probably watching with the mute on. 
But for me and the storyline, while there's an audience there, and again, 1.9 million viewers is not saying much compared to what it has been before. Because, you know, there's still a dwindling audience year after year. It continues to happen. Are they going more to our social media? I don't know if they are. I'm not sure if they are. Like, for instance, the 1.9 million viewers that might have listened, that might have watched our two. Okay. In the Dominic Mysterio Liv Morgan segment, it got 389,000 views so far on the USA feed. And I'm probably looking, if I looked at another feed, I'm sure it probably shows up somewhere else on the main WWE channel, right? So if I looked for that, I could probably go and find it and see that there. But like, that's what it got in there. Oh, 238,000 viewers on the WWE channel for the Dom Live Rhea Triangle. So that's what happened over that. And people getting into it saying, why can you turn down Liv Morgan? Well, you know, I'm going to take my, the hat of my wrestling is real podcast content, content. Okay. To the, the brave and the show that I do. Okay. When it comes to women, you know, I mean, maybe in the storyline that Dominic is going to go ahead and turn on Rhea and go to live. That would be a mistake because I honestly think Rhea Ripley is winning the ball, winning the belt back. I still feel like, well, there really wasn't anything much of any intimacy romance with Rhea Ripley and Liv and Dominic Mysterio to give us anything about that. I have said this over and over. I have taken time on this program to talk about it. And I don't even know why I do it, but I have. I've said so much about it. It's ridiculous. Okay. But hey, people put out memes on Liv Morgan turning around. Oh, look. Oh, you know what? I'm sorry. Daisy Dukes we saw in the 90s. Okay. Like that's a 90s look. All right nothing new once you've seen a pair uh, an ass and a pair of shorts and daisy dukes you've seen them all <laughs> just saying just because it's Liv morgan right hey man everybody wants to go ahead and get up and say oh we were all like you know turned on by it and the dirty dom shirt to go and add to the the mystique it's like a fantasy thing right cosplay almost and she's been the one pursuing and for him to kind of finally like turn everything off and go by the wayside yeah that's that was i thought the right decision so i don't see Liv morgan deciding to go along i mean if you want to make her more sex crazy and like just i'm not gonna let you keep dom he's mine and just go along with it i guess but i never felt anything to the contrary that i thought that dominic mysterio wanted her in the first place but let's take the segment Let's take it what it was. And like I said, they put it together, decided to go this route. Do I think it's any much better? I don't know. But Rhea Ripley wanted to go ahead and get Dominic out there and confront. So, of course, there's no visual on here. So you just have to imagine Liv Morgan and Daisy Dukes and a dirty Dom shirt and her hair all down and blonde, looking all giddy, gushing over Dominic Mysterio. But the acting job is far from excellent. Let's just go into it. Live! You want him? Come get him! <laughs> Dom has become a pawn. Dirty Dom's really done it this time, hasn't he? She hasn't come out yet, but we find her in the back. The other side of the arena. She's behind us, Cole. And the Hi simps guys. are going Thanks, to gush man. and do whatever they're going to do. Right up there. Rhea, um, I'm actually not going to be coming down to the ring because unlike you, I actually have some self-control. Saying that in the prayer, Daisy Dukes is, is very... I waited for you uh, all yeah. this time. I can wait until SummerSlam. I think the reason why I actually did come out in the first place is pretty obvious. It's because... I have feelings for Dominic. And the thing is, this has nothing to do with the title. The title 
is the pawn. When when Cole talks about Dominic being the pawn, no, the title's the pawn. There's no emphasis to that. We're trying to build to a match here. After all this time, Rhea Ripley has come back from injury to go reclaim her title. But the focus is on this. And Dominic, Dominic has feelings for me too. And even you can't deny that. Why don't you just keep saying Dom? Why is it Dominic? Do you want to know why you can't deny that, Rhea? It's because gorgeous men like Dominic, he doesn't go for girls that look like you. That's no. a heel remark. I'll give it that. No. But Gorgeous men like Dominic go for girls that look like me. By the way, <laughs> I thought Vince McMahon was gone. This is a Vince McMahon type move. I thought Triple H was a little more progressive in that nature, right? Oh, we're going to go do sex on this. But uh, we did. Oh, yeah. My God! But it's finally the fact that Dominic finally took us out of our misery and finally put this girl in her place. As an older guy, I don't, I would not go after, you know, I would not go after the honey trap. Because that's who's, that's who's, that's who's, that's who's, that's who's, that's who's, that's talking honey trap. Why? Guys, guys, please, please, let, let Daddy Dominic talk. Live. Daddy Dom, I think. Guys, please, please, please just let him speak. Because I think, I think I know what you're going to say. And I feel the exact same way, too. Yeah, I don't get the schoolgirl crush so, kind of feel from her. It doesn't so feel right and open authentic. Just say those three little words. You want those three little words? Dominic did a good job, by the way, though. Please. I hate you, Liv. Are you stupid? Are you deaf? No entiendes lo que te estoy diciendo, cabrona. I don't like you. You've ruined my life over and over again. No te puedo entender lo que piensas por la cabeza. Estás I don't get, through, I don't get what, you're seeing, what you get in your head. I can't stand you. You've ruined everything for me. And now I... Te odio con toda mi vida. I hate you with all my life, he said. And then the fake crying is horrible. The fake crying's bad. It gets really bad. She can't pull the tears. And Rhea Ripley, by the way, I like the way she handled it. This was actually, this was a good part here about how Rhea handled this. <laughs> yep. She just licked him. But the thing is, we don't need to go ahead and change Liv and Rhea. Or oh, excuse me, Ron, Dominic and Rhea. We don't need to get the Bonnie and Clyde. That's not old. Remember, we had a three months, uh, a three month hiatus. This is still working. We don't need to break this up. And so for SummerSlam, I want Triple H and Bruce Pritchard and all you people back there in the back, the creative team. We do not need to split up Dominic Mysterio and Rhea Ripley. I mean, you want to split up Judgment Day and Damian Priest goes by the wayside after the whole deal with Gunther, go right ahead. But we don't need to break up Dominic and Rhea. That is still working. It would be the biggest mistake. Like, I mean, you could go ahead and break up Judgment Day, JD McDonough, whatever, and defend about, like, break it all up. Carlito, all that. Break that whole clubhouse up. But you can't break off this. And I believe, in my opinion, Liv Morgan is not the draw in this at all. All she is is just a disruptor with Rhea Ripley and Dominic Mysterio. But the draw of this particular segment is we want to see if Dominic Mysterio and Rhea Ripley break up. It doesn't matter. It doesn't make sense throughout the storyline where Liv Morgan looks like the better choice because she helped with a couple of matches Oh, to beat her, beat his dad or to help judgment day, get the tag team belts back. But like he knew that he was getting played. He knew that he was 
being brought along and dragged along. And he just didn't say anything. But his allegiance is towards Rhea Ripley. Am I going to be wrong? Hey, they could screw up the storyline and do it. And that'll be a huge mistake. It will be a huge mistake. I think if you want to do something with Liv Morgan, all due respect, you let her turn crazy. Like, I think Liv Morgan turning into, you know, going psychotic. That, like, the, almost like a Mickey James to Trish Stratus. I think that works. I think it works really well. We don't have any, you know, crazy or psychotic characters right now. We could use that. And a, a, a heartbroken Liv Morgan would work. And to see her get, you know, a mean streak, because honestly, what worked for Liv Morgan before she got into this storyline right here and won the world title back after her return was when she was with Ronda Rousey and she had that mean streak to her that worked and she was favorable. But this storyline right here, I know why they did it. I know why they did it. I get it. The nuances of all oh, the backstage, look what they're doing back there to the canoodling. What are they doing? I get that part, but, the, the the whole payoff of the storyline right here is you didn't give me anything with Liv Morgan that made me feel like, oh, that she's going to be able to steal Dom away. I don't believe it. Now, for the audience, the, the base audience that you're playing to, WWE, you think everybody else is going to go that way. But yeah, you're playing to the fans out there that always watch this show no matter what. They're going to be stuck on this show. They're not going to change the channel. You know, it's like, man, I'm going to quote Vince Russo again because he was on. On Monday night, Vince Russo made the point on the Sports Kitas Legion of Raw podcast that Raw is not a three hour show that you would hit the DVR, pause it if you need to go grab a sandwich, hit the John, go you know, grab a delivery, whatever it is. Like, you're not stopping for this show. And that's not one of those things where like, okay, you know, I might watch a basketball game or a football game and I might pause it or I might go back to it. But Raw and SmackDown, you don't go back. You don't need to go back. There's, It's not anything you're missing here at all. You can just keep going. And that's it. Like, even when I watch Raw or I watch SmackDown, like, I'm not going back on it. Like, I, I mean, if I do, it's well after and I'm watching the clips on YouTube or X, but I'm not going back for anything else. Like at that moment, there's not anything so exciting or so exhilarating that I'm going to miss it at that moment. And I absolutely positively have to go back and watch it. Like Liv Morgan and Daisy Dukes. Okay. Some of the fans, you know, if you have dreamed of a girl like her to date and go out to the movies with and go out and do all anything with, and you got all these kind of fantasy, fantasizations. Okay. Hey man, rock on for you. But that's not the rest of the world. Like, I would like that WWE would not just play to their base audience. And that's what Vince Russo is trying to say. Because they play to the base, base audience that will watch this no matter what. Meanwhile, you make fans like me that have been around forever feel a bit casual. Because I just, I'm not so glued to the set because I am like watching something else. Okay, I'm not watching another show in the background and have it on. And I got it listening on Bluetooth, watching through a tablet. That's what I do with Raw and SmackDown. They're just kind of casual viewing. Just casual viewing. I have it on. I'm monitoring it. I'm watching it. But there's not a lot of things that really capture my attention. I'm sorry. Driveway Dolls, Shayna Baszler, Zoe Stark, and Sonya Deville does not interest me. Damage Control does not interest me. Fire and Ice, Alba Fire, and uh, Aladon do not interest me. Just don't. DIY, do not interest me. Final Testament, do not interest me. New Day, do not interest me. And now Alpha Academy, I'm going to add to that list too, after the how they were handled this week too. Okay? So there's a couple of storylines we get that we actually are kind of interested in. Coming out of WrestleMania, people were all about Rhea Ripley. So her return was last week. People were interested in that. Same thing here. The payoff of like, okay, is uh, we're going to get a final answer. And Rhea Ripley wanted to get that final answer. Now, to get the heat, there's no heat in this match. 
right? There's no heat in this match because Rhea Ripley, all she's going to do is get her belt back. That's all we're looking for in the match. But there's no heat around this. So they do this here. And I have spent more time talking about Liv Morgan and Daisy Dukes than I am ever caring to remember or talk about again. Nothing with her. She's a sweet girl. She's beautiful. But I've said enough. I've said enough. It's like, let's get past this. Let's give Rhea the belt back. Let's get Bonnie and Clyde back together. And all will be good. Because that's one of the few things that I feel like has been consistently good when it comes to Raw. That right there has been consistently good. Last week, I was talking about Gunther and Demian Priest. And again, I'm like, I'm not feeling all this right here. Oh, and now we're going to hear the entire Judgment Day called Street Trash. I'm still not interested. Okay, that's enough to go and tip off Demian Priest and go into a big, wild pull apart. All right. Still nothing more that I really care about to say about that, but that's what they're going to try to do. Now, I'll get back to more of the Raw stuff because there's more to go and say. But there's a few things on SPAC that also got to me because I just want to point out the storylines that made me cringe in a number of ways. You know I've been critical of LA Knight. And I will say this again. Remember, I was in defense of LA Knight back last year, right? I'm not trying to... And this was what leading up to Crown Jewel, I said it. It's not as if LA Knight could not be built up properly to the main event. Okay, but when they gave him the match with Roman Reigns, I was like, uh, just throw away. It doesn't matter. But now we have him to be the opponent for Logan Paul. And the way they've done it, oh, a little bit of, you know, infiltration into Logan Paul's mansion in Puerto Rico and chasing around Logan Paul, the contract, and Logan Paul already got to win on LA night. So like, okay, why do we need to do this again? And the logic for LA, uh, for Logan Paul to go ahead and give LA Knight a title match, it just doesn't go go right through me. But we're going to watch this stupid thing because what's going to happen is as the heel that Logan Paul is, he's carrying this. Remember when we got into LA Knight and his coming into the main roster and going after The Miz? Oh, or what was it after Bray Wyatt? He went to the Miz, and that was a, that was the next opponent for him, right? And the the promos we thought they were going to be so good because that first one felt like there was something there to it. Well, then what happened here? Because whatever LA Knight was given to go ahead and like kind of uses talking points to go back at Logan Paul, I don't know. But Logan Paul went into business for himself, and he really did roast LA Knight in this promo. So here's seven minutes of it. We're going to break it down. It's Hillbilly Aladdin. Sons of Anarchy, extra looking Larry the Lobster dude, a shot at my United States Championship. Logan Paul is playing his part to a T. He is an excellent heel. I mean, if you don't like him, he is a piece of shit. Hey, you feel like he's a prick. Over here. You talk about. There's no reason for you to face me. And in a way. Man, maybe you're right. Maybe you should just go ahead and take a walk and we'll think about this later. But the one thing I think about before you do do that is I just, I start to think the one reason you might want to reconsider is the fact that every time we've been face to face, I have owned and cooked you. It doesn't even make sense what he's saying. And by the way, for LA Knight to take 30 seconds right there after Logan Paul's retort, and this is what he comes back with, and he's having to go ahead and pace around a little bit to try to get his words right. He doesn't have a good comeback here. And it sounds weak. But the crowd is like clapping seals. They're going to... Let's take us back just a year ago. I walked right down that aisle. I presented you a map. And I told you it would give you the exact directions. Oh, where you can stick each and every bottle of Prime. Man, that was a year ago. Now, in the meantime, you become the United States champion. And And congratulations to you. Thank you very much, L.A. Knight. L.A. Knight, you know, confronted it, but he didn't win. I can't take that away from you. If you're holding that, 
I tell you what, man, you are the man. You're the guy around here as long as you hold that. So I figure to myself, maybe it's time for my shot. So I ask you for it, and you tell me no. Okay, what has L.A. Knight done? Once again, what has he done to earn that universal title shot against Roman Reigns? What has he earned when he has lost the U.S. Title, tag, tag title tournament? What has he earned when he's lost in the King of the Ring tournament? What more do you want? What, a random win over Santos Escobar? Apollo, I, I don't know. Like, tell me why in storyline or in the build to this character, anyone feels like Ellie Knight deserves a title shot. It's for his promos alone. That's it. Oh, because the crowd's oh the crowd it likes me. I'm over with the crowd. That's it. Because they get to say, yeah. That's all they get. And he sounds like The Rock. So, like, you know, most people didn't get a chance to have The Rock around. You know, The Rock in 97, 98. Not the final boss rock, which was spectacular. Let's just say that again. Some of the best promos of the year. Around Christmas time, I might have to go dissect those things once again because they were so good. So good. By the way. I got to go back to MJF's promo tonight where he converts the international title to the American Championship. Another phenomenal promo that he cut. Old school MJF, if you can call it old school. It's a traditional heel MJF that we, that that they faced CM Punk, that faced Chris Jericho, that faced Cody Rhodes. It was that. And I loved every minute of it. Loved every second of it, as a matter of fact. LA Knight is no MJF. LA Knight is good. And he has worked better with better material in TNA. And he has worked better with better feuds in TNA. And NWA for that matter. In WWE, they have failed him. He is just a prop here to get another title match for no reason whatsoever to go up against Logan Paul because he needs somebody for Logan Paul to take on a SummerSlam. But Logan Paul is not going to drop that belt to him. Okay? LA Knight will not win the U.S. title. Mark my words. He will not. You could take that to the bank. Back to Logan Paul. So I decided to take that into my own hands. I show up to your house, you goofy little friends. They let me in. I make myself at home in the pool, make it into my own little toilet. This takes way too long to get around. And what's that do? All that did was it got me a Money in the Bank qualifying match. But what that did was it got me to pin your shoulders right here on this mat. Now that felt good. That felt damn good. And I want to do it again, but it didn't give me what I want because I want what I want is sitting right on your shoulder. So now I... So he won a qualifying match, and that entitles him to that. And by the way, to summarize the whole feud in the first place, the program we've had, we've watched it. And the explanation and all this here taking way too long. Logan Paul roasts LA Knight with less talk time. But let LA Knight continue. Chase you all around the damn world just to get you to sign this contract. Oh my God, still- listen to yourself, Sean. You sound- now, here's the thing. LA Knight was allowed to go two minutes there, uninterrupted. And now Logan Paul is going to lay at the SmackDown on LA Knight. You don't like to hear this, but it's true. Because LA Knight is going to be put in his place here. And I don't know where Logan Paul got all this from, but like, I seriously feel like he went so hard on LA Knight that, you know, LA Knight, I don't know how he comes back from that because there was some real truth to it. How pathetic. You're a grown man. Look at you. Look how bad you want this. The fact is you need this. You need this match against me. I don't need this match. Logan Paul is hitting him on all cylinders. Watch what he does right now. What, listen to what he said. And that's a fact, LA Knight. We are not the same, brother. See, the difference between you and me is your entire existence is defined by what you do in this ring, but not me. See, when I leave this ring, I'm interviewing former presidents. 
building multi-billion dollar businesses, starting a family, changing the landscape of sports media with my brother, the last name Paul echoes throughout the zeitgeist of culture. And that's not to say that what you do in this ring isn't not important. It is. You're very good. In fact, I like this whole catchphrase bodybuilder shtick you got going. <laughs> it's a good gimmick. See, my real problem with you, LA Knight, is you want my accolades, but you are not me. You don't think like me. You don't move like me. You want to be the champion, but you are not him. And for someone whose entire existence is defined by what they do in this ring, you have not had a single defining moment in the past 20 years. You are a gym bro with a spray tan and a catchphrase pretending to be The Rock. Oh, oh, cut me, I believe. I've never heard that one before. Leave it to you to use old material. Low rent, low brow, low T. Low T, log and P. I'll tell you what, you Not talk about the United States Championship, you talk about frauds. Let's talk about frauds for a second. Because here's a man parading around as a United States Championship. Here's a man playing fraud on this whole damn company, pretending to be the United States Champion. And meanwhile, you won't sign a contract. And isn't that funny? I'm glad you mentioned your brother. Because you mentioned your brother. Your bro he doesn't have to sign a contract. You're not a number one contender. You haven't earned it. I mean, Logan Paul's right. And you're not going to like to hear this either. But Logan Paul is a better promo coder than LA Knight. I'm going to say it again. Logan Paul cuts a better promo than LA Knight. That's some high honor there. Because LA Knight's good. Okay, he can match up, but the material he's working with right now is weak compared to Logan Paul. Because I feel like Logan Paul, he's taking advantage of the most he has with the words he's saying. Because Ellie Knight looks like he's trying to find his words. Remember, they're not totally scripted here. They know where they have to get to. They know how to get there in seven minutes. But what they did here, Logan Paul hit so many different spots pretty good. You know, the fact that I didn't know anything significant in 20 years is because, of course, anything that Sean Rorick or Ellie Knight ever did or, or Eli Drake ever did in another company does not exist in the, the WWE universe, right? So back to this once again, Ellie Knight trying to pick back up, and this is the payoff to try to get Logan Paul to sign the contract. Brother is willing to jump in the ring with Mike Tyson. But you don't seem to have the balls to jump in the ring with me. It's not a good comeback. I guess balls don't run in the family, now do they? <laughs> Y'all want this match? I'll tell you what, LA Knight. I'll sign your little contract. I'll give you the shot at glory. Give me this, Nick. And how about this? After I beat you at SummerSlam, you will have nothing. I'd say I'm going to take everything from you, but you have nothing of value to give me. In fact, open this up, Nick. How about this? I'm going to give you something. On the back of this, I'm going to draw a map that you can follow with the exact directions where you can stick your dreams of becoming a WWE champion. Yeah! That was good. Logan Paul got the best of them. Ellie Knight gets his contract signed, but he looks like a fool out there. Again, that's six minutes right there. Logan Paul had less time and got more jabs in. The low T, you know, Prime's not selling. Go after Jake Paul. That doesn't work. So let's break it down. I want Ellie Knight to be better, but they're not doing right by him. They do not book him correctly. They have not built him up with wins to earn these title shots they just think oh well the crowd likes him they like when he goes yeah and he gets a couple of you know rock like sounding talking whatever or stone cold steve austin kind of sounding promos out there and that's it that's all he has it's a shallow gimmick and it's not good as that anyway 
That's not on LA Knight. I'm telling you, as Eli Drake, he was much better. Wherever else. But this company, I don't know. They don't understand. I mean, and this is a veteran. He's 40 years old. At some point, are people going to still stick behind him? Because he's going to get, he's going to lose again to Logan Paul. Oh, he got the win in the, in the Money in the Bank qualifying match when it didn't matter. There's nothing on the line. But when the match is going to be on the line, Logan Paul will not lose this belt. I, I will go to the bank with that. He will not. The other thing I got to go ahead and criticize this week was what they did with the bloodline. And I don't understand what this was about. So the bloodline, we already had to deal where, you know, Final Testament already has their backstage, the ghoulish kind of stuff. And Judgment Day, their other thing beforehand, before they became, you know, aces and eights with a clubhouse. And Carlito becoming a prospect. But now we get the bloodline, you know, backstage. So no more Paul Heyman. Now we have this other thing we're going to do with Solo Sokoa. Looking, by the way, it looks like the D'Angelo family segments on NXT. Do you understand that? Like, they're not even like trying anything special here. The bloodline in this dark room, like gangsters, very weak. Oh, the lighting and all this, but it's like, what are we doing here with the bloodline? What are we doing with the bloodline? Listen, I want this group to be able to go and be built up to a level to Roman Reigns, the Usos, but they're not. Remember, the only person I really enjoy, I saw Sokoa as the talker, it's hurting him. It's hurting him because he's just not that leader. It doesn't work for him. He's not buying for me. I mean, you can try all you want, but it doesn't feel right. Much like how Roman Reigns is not like leading the cause. He had Paul talk a lot for him. There needs to be a wise man for this bloodline, and they haven't brought someone in. That's a mistake. The one thing they got right is they did get the right enforcer in place. They're going to have an enforcer, Jacob Fatu, you can do no better. Now we're hearing Hikaleo's being signed. What are you going to do with him? How many more Samoans and Tongas are you going to use wrongly? Tama Tonga Tonga Loa mean nothing here. As I said, if there could have been some kind of a buildup to show some strength, some leadership from Sokoa, we're not seeing that. They're just beating people up, but they've done nothing. They've accomplished nothing. They have no gold. Let's play what they did with them this week, giving them almost two minutes and this, you know, dark kind of looking with the concrete wall and this, again, this looks like Final Testament here. Let's play it anyway. Life, life is so good when well, you're the tribal chief on the island of relevancy. So good. But it's also busy. I never have a moment to myself. But when I do, you know what I love the most? A good mystery. Yeah. I'm not talking about a mystery. Who's going to be Cody Rose's tag team partner? No, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about a mystery of who's going to step up and disrespect the tribal chief by teaming with Cody Rose tonight. That's what I'm talking about. Have you seen what we done to Randy Orton last week? Have you? So if you're on Cody's side, that means you're against me. You're against my family, you're against the bloodline, and you're against the tribal chief. Now, they should have called this something other than the bloodline. At this point, this is not the bloodline, and I don't like that they took over the gimmick. They took over the faction. Tribal chief, head of the table, Souls of Code took those roles. That's fine. But calling themselves the bloodline... It it cheapens what the bloodline was that we all loved for four years. Okay, this right here is not working. This promo was a mistake. Souls of Gold being, being angry and like, you know, not one to talk and just being just pissed off. 
And Solzico now, you know, he's being much more talkative. That doesn't make any sense. Solzico, for the longest time, has been the enforcer. He's just been fighter. And he hasn't said much at all. And he's been talking a little bit more because he was going to, you know, screw Paul Heyman over eventually. But really, what is this right here? I mean, the focus, by the way, of the match as well, the setup to the tag team match they set up later on. Okay. Let's not focus on who might team up with Cody Rhodes. When the direction of the promo should have been towards Cody himself. And he could have really been done better by Solsico saying, Cody, we've been beating up your people. You know, we took out Randy Orton. You're not going to see him again. And if anybody else decides to go ahead and team up with you, Cody, no one is getting in the way of me and that universal title because you're holding what's rightfully to the bloodline. It's ours. As the tribal chief, as the head of the table, I'm going to take that from you. And no one, you and no one are not going to stop me from claiming what's mine. I hold the throne. I live on the island of relevancy. I'm the tribal chief. I'm the head of the table. And I will be the universal champion, the WWE champion. So what they did right here completely missed the mark. The focus is on Cody. And for the match, that's what it should have been here. But they don't do that here. They decide to go ahead and threaten whoever's going to tag with Cody, but not Cody. That's a mistake. So tonight, tonight, tonight better be a handicap match or someone is going to pay for the price. Because... I am the tribal chief, and you will acknowledge me. And why is Jacob Fatu putting the beads on him now? He should have been wearing them from the get-go. That doesn't make any sense. All I know is that the bloodline is not being treated right. This is a farce. I would have preferred that they would have called it something else. I don't know what that would be. The dynasty or, or called something else, man. The SWAT team, like whatever. Give me something else, man. How is it you're missing on this? How do you miss on this? You got talented people right here. The storyline, the direction, it's all wrong. We're trying to get Cody and Solo Okay, so Cody's friends are getting hit out. But what about Cody? Let's get the heat back on these two. That's the focus of this. Cody and Solo. Boggles the mind. But this is the things I look at. And this is what just kind of gets me the wrong way here. Anyways. I haven't talked about Bailey and for the fact that she turns a heel, now we have Nia Jax and Tiffany Stratton, you know, teaming up together and their buddy buddy. And Nia Jax is, you know, set to go and take on Bailey for the women's title. And Tiffany Stratton could very well go ahead and cash in the briefcase at any time. Why is there not a contract of the briefcase? I know it's nitpicking. I know it's nitpicking, but I didn't see that. I'm looking for that too, but I didn't see that. So explain that to me as well. Meanwhile, that's what we had here. But there's a difference here, right? Let's go ahead and turn things around. I, I gave all this time over to WWE, right? So let's now go into the fact that we have AEW hitting some all cylinders right now on some of their matches. I don't, I'm not here to try to go ahead and start, you know, I'm comparing and contrasting because it's real. I can do that right now because honestly, I can detect what is really working right now in the storylines with AEW on a couple of them that are really hitting Mariah May and Tony Storm that shit is fire like that match now is it's such a fever pitch right now at the right time it's incredible like that is going hot Mercedes Monet and Britt Baker and now Britt Baker getting attacked by Mercedes Monet Mercedes Monet's new you know 
valet or new security in the debut in Camille. I'm so happy to see her. You know, the owner of the Burke, the Brick House, has finally made it to AEW, and now she's going to accompany Mercedes Monet. I like it. You know, it's a good way to go just bring her in. And like, it's absolutely makes sense to have Mercedes when they have somebody like this as a heel character to stand in the way. In the same way that Britt Baker used to use Jamie Hayter, but not so much anymore. But I mean, really, that's what it was to me. That's how it looked like. So now MGF and the masterclass promo. I can't say there is anybody else better right now cutting promos and wrestling right now at all, like MJF. He is one of a kind. I should mention that MJF is showing a shit-eating grin throughout. Let's just make that point as well. Hey, there's the new international champ. All right, I'm back. Oh! Will Ospreay did not hit the Tiger Driver 91 because he's a gutless coward. The fact that you mouth breathers actually thought he could beat me when he couldn't even beat that schmuck swerve is laughable. By the way, Shane, I haven't forgotten about my world championship. And I'm telling you... <laughs> By the way, I like that he goes after Schwartz exactly. Griffin right now. Welcome for MJF here in Nashville. I'm just waiting for the right moment to pounce. And if I were you, I'd pray to God that moment doesn't come. You see, when the spotlight is on MJF, I shine bright like a diamond, baby. When the spotlight is on your whittle hero, Will Ospreay, he melts. I beat Will Ospreay without breaking a damn sweat. <laughs> Easiest match of my life. I did it quickly, I did it efficiently. Wrestling analysts are saying it was the most dominant victory of all time. Not my words, theirs. I love that you just twisted the words this awesome. So heel, so good. Now ordinarily, I'm sure a lot of people would tell you, Osprey, to burn your shitty little indie kick pads and retire, but I don't think that's good enough, Will. See, if I were you, I'd take a long walk off a short pier. He gets very personal as always. But lucky for you, Will, your grandma died recently, didn't she? It's so good to go in grand. Like, the heat's good. He's building and building. So I guess you can dig yourself a grave next to hers, but pro tip, make sure you dig that grave about a football field away from her tombstone. Lord knows that fat skank needs all the room she can get. Wow. <laughs> See, he wins the title. I kill me. I'm the best. I kill me. And gloats. Listen, listen, and shut he's up. He's just shut goading up. off straight to a fever pitch. Moreover, let's talk about the facts here, Will. If you don't like what I've got to say, how about you come on out here and face me like a man, huh? Well, as we saw, Alex Marvez oh, was on the right, spot. Oh, that's right, you won't. Because you're worthless. No, he won't because his car Speaking of worthless, <laughs> let's talk about this international championship, shall we? M MJF did it. MJF was the one to put the I knife in the, the car. You, you guys love two? this belt because it was held by workhorses who would come on out here week in and week out and would try to earn your affection by working hard. <laughs> I love uh, this shit. Uh, well, I love the matches, but I love the what way he treats joke. This. I love it. Working hard is for pores like all of you. This goes back to his original heel turn. You guys like this belt turn. because it was held. Because it was held by I international talent. I would have to sit back and watch he you shrugged. people. Pretend that anyone from outside of our great nation matters. And frankly, you people are unpatriotic and treasonous. So this is set up for Wembley right here. This is going to get him the biggest heat by changing that I title. I deserve a title worthy of my superior intellect, my superior bank account, and my superior upbringing. This title, much like Daniel Garcia... 
Much like Willie Boy, and much like all you white trash hicks, is nothing more than garbage. He just medusa the belt. Yeah, how is he doing? He just medusa the belt. I can't believe that. Hilarious. With MJF? Really? I mean, there's, there's no low he won't stoop to. I deserve a title that symbolizes the best wrestler in the world and the best country in the world. Not surprised News he Flash, be, by the way. I'm not talking about that third world cesspool of a nation known as the United Kingdom. No, no. Oh, my goodness. So, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> please rise for your American championship. The belt's cool, by the way. I like the belt. <laughs> oh. It looks the like a tail, it's almost like a Tony Blanchard US Heavyweight title. That's cool, is man. Known as the That's a nice looking belt. No, no, no. While, while I appreciate the USA chance, I got to keep it honest with you guys. When I talk about America, I'm not talking about nasty ass Nashville. <laughs> no, no. I'm Crap. talking about real America. I'm talking about the only America that matters. I'm talking about the most magical place in the world. <laughs> known as Plainview, Long Island, New York. Oh my goodness. He just really gets, he is so good at getting this crowd I've out. I've been to play view many and times. Unapologetic sure heel. It's magic, but There's I, I no one else that can do it like him. God bless the USA. Right now today. God bless your American <laughs> champion. But most importantly, God bless your American hero, Maxwell Jacob Friedman. Thank me later. And by the way, I must say, Will Ospreay coming back out and attacking was fantastic. That was really another section that was just amazing on how that worked out and how that came because that was like, wow. And then we go to the, the glamour Mariah May and a quick match against some Nashville indie star in there. And then Tony storm attacking. And that was like, wow. Well, Mariah May, a very vile, very vicious one. Tony Storm. So Tony Storm, everybody's all up and at it because we hear her music, and she doesn't come out like her normal look. She's really rubbing salt in the wound. And what the hell? Wait a minute. She comes out like John Moxley did on the first Dynamite. Oh my God! Look at that face. Or do or nothing. Excuse you me. see that scar on her head? She's right out of a Clinton. She's got a scar on her head. This was like and Tony Storm's face was swimming. flying the referee cars, trying to separate the Less and more, she gets a microphone, and Tony Storm is able to get this match to full speed by saying just a couple of words in 10 seconds. She gets a mic, and here's what she says. I mean, I'm so Tyler, into this. Tony man. Storm willing to risk her life in defense of her AEW Women's World Championship, but I think this match. Let me tell you, this is what we're getting in terms of the matches. We had a great setup for in Blood and Guts, which was another ridiculously wild match. Okay, coffin drop from the top of the cage from uh, from Darby Allen, also skateboard on the arm with tacks on it. They were just ridiculous in some of that movie, in that match. That was wild. And we got a significant match set up where Darby Allen was able to go ahead and challenge scapegoat Jack Perry for the TNT title. And Matt Jackson had to go ahead and relent, surrender the match, or Jack Perry be put on fire once again. I'm like, damn, that's pretty good. That's pretty damn good. No flamethrower this time. 
couldn't have found a way to put him in there, but they did. He did have a lighter, and he did gal- douse Jack Perry in gasoline. So it's set up. They did it. What a great job! So, like I've said, everything right there for the setup of things coming up when it comes to the pay per views coming up, all in and SummerSlam. We're getting a lot of things set up really well, and I'm liking it a lot. So. Let's go ahead and really quickly go ahead and go into what the matches look like and where we're at in terms of the setup for both events. We'll go into that as well. So, so far, Summer Sam looks like this. Also, I got to make mention of that this weekend, we got Death Before Dishonor, Ring of Honor coming up this weekend, which, you know, I'll probably talk about on Wednesday night next week, and we'll bring it up then because of how things get kind of set up, but we'll go ahead and talk about it. Anyway, Ring of Honor already has a set. It's at Esports Stadium, Arlington, Texas. Athena will take on Queen Anamata for the Ring of Honor women's title. Athena has held the belt for the longest of any women's world champion in Ring of Honor, but of course there have been only so many women's world champions. Mark Briscoe will defend the Ring of Honor title, which you wanted the last major pay-per-view against Roderick Strong, which was what? Supercard of Honor, right? I think it was. Billy Starks will take on Red Red Velvet for the Women's World Television title. The Ring of Honor Pure Championship will have Wheeler Yuta defending against Lee Moriarty. Texas Deathmatch with Diamante and Layla Hirsch. That's what's set up so far. I'm sure they'll have a zero hour and other matches that'll be scheduled. That's coming up this Friday. And so, like I said, I'll probably go ahead and comment about it over on Wednesday. We'll talk about it then on next week's program. As for Summer Sam, that comes up next, and that is next weekend, next Saturday. Cody Rhodes versus Sol Sokoa, undisputed the WWE Championship. Demi Priest versus Gunther for the World Title, the World World Heavyweight Championship. Women's World Title of Morgan versus Rhea Ripley. Women's World Women's Championship with Bailey against Nia Jax. Logan Paul and LA Knight U.S. Title. Zami Zayn Braun Breaker for the IC Title. And CM Punk, Drew McIntyre with Seth Rollins, a special guest referee. So they've built up the pay-per-view. There's going to be good matches in there. Again, I am complaining about a lot when it comes to the way that was, everything was set up with the build of some of these matches. That's the part I'm having an issue with. So CM Punk, Drew McIntyre, obviously that's a big build for a match. That's really great build-up. And then Liv Morgan, Rhea Ripley, I guess, you know, with the way everything is set up now that we finally got to pay off to that storyline, that's good to go ahead and finally have that and get to somewhere with that. And then other than that, let's go into what is all in. Wembley Stadium, that's set up for August 25th. And so far, a lot of matches already scheduled for that. Swerve Strickland, Brian Danielson for the world title. Tony Storm versus Brian May for the women's championship. And we got Mercedes Monet and Britt Baker more than likely going to be set up for Wembley Stadium. And MGF and Will Osprey now for the American Championship. All set up right there. Okay, so I think that's all we're going to go and take up with that. Oh, one more story we should bring up right now. For whatever reason, CM Punk has only had, what, the Royal Rumble match he was in, and he got hurt. And then he's had his promo work With Drew McIntyre. Okay. But where we're at right now, for whatever reason, CM Punk wants to go ahead and rework his contract. He's on a three-year way three contract at the moment, and it sounds like he wants to go ahead and restructure it. Because of what he wants to do, apparently, according to Ibu of Russell Purists. So this is... I, I've never heard about this source before, but he's being quoted right now as Punk wants to be here forever and he wants to work this out. He wants to get paid, and then he wants to slow things down and run NXT. So he feels like he can go and work with younger stars. That's where he wanted to do an AEW. So now he's going to take that same plan over here, but he wants to get paid more or get you know a certain set of pay and extension or whatever it is, but he wants to rework his contract to something better. So he came in pretty quickly on a deal. Now he feels like he's worth reworking it six months later. Well, yeah, six months later. A little bit more than that. Is it worth it? Do you think it's worth it? I'm a little bit under the gun thinking if it is. I'm not. I'm not sure if I feel the same way. But this is what they're deciding to do. 
we're going to leave it there. That is the show for tonight. Thanks for listening in. Enjoy. Enjoy Death Before Dishonor if you're going to catch it this weekend. Uh, I did make my comments again about NXT. It's week about WWE uh, TNA, excuse me, TNA Slimiversary. And the quite a few clips I put out there about the Joe Hendry part when it comes to NXT. You know, NXT now is going to get Joe Hendry's concert, which is nice. And I'm glad that TNA took the decision. And I think about it after the fact that I am actually glad that they made a decision to not book. To not book Joe Henry as a champion right now. So Nick Nemeth has been more than six months with the company. So to bring him to this spot right now and to go in the battle for glory as a champion, most likely. Yeah, that works for me. That all that all works right. I, I like that. And then we move along into Joe Henry in that eliminator match for the world title. So only we'll to go ahead and say that, okay, well, Joe Henry is not going to go ahead and, you know, be buried in this match. He got the pin on Moose, which is very significant and eliminated Moose. So that right there means a lot for Joe Henry in terms of what his credibility is. But now we set up the feud with Josh Alexander who turned heel. So that's a featured feud. That will be a match towards the top of the card at Bound for Glory. Most likely they're going to go and put it there. Obviously, they'll set things up coming up now for the next pay-per-view coming up. But all in all, I like it. It's a good setup for it. And they're going to work that feud going forward. Let's just see how they go with it. That looks good to me. And that's it. We'll leave it right there. Thanks for finding the show as you always do. Of course, again, kickoffpodcasts.com for all the things that are going on. And, you know, so glad you find the show. If you haven't subscribed to the YouTube channel, please go and look for it. You can find it on kickoffpodcasts.com or go to YouTube and find at King of Podcasts and all my past episodes are there. Plus my other programs, the Praise of the Botchers and the Broadcasters Podcast, which I'll be recording tomorrow. Come back next week for another Wrestling Real Podcast because wrestling needs us. <laughs>